Good afternoon. Welcome to Voice of Rio. I'm your host, David Lawrence. Uh, I'm here with two faculty members, a uh, special guest of ours this afternoon to talk about the art program uh, here at the University of Rio Grande and Rio Grande Community College. My usual co-host is not with me this afternoon. She couldn't uh, attend, uh, but I am very glad that I've got these two guests with me. Uh, I'm going to introduce them here. Uh, to my immediate right is Benji Davies, professor of art. Uh, to his right, uh, Professor Kevin Lyles, also of art. Uh, they're going to be sharing some photographs of, of them, some things that they've done, uh, both themselves, uh, some of the work that the students have done on, on uh, some of our art students as well as uh, some of the things that they've done and they're preparing to do for a fellowship that they're both involved in. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, Professor Davies, if I could start with you, Benji. Sure. Uh, why don't you first off tell us just a little bit about yourself, how long you've been at RIO, things like that. Sure. Um, and then we'll get into some of the art stuff. Sure. Uh, I've been at RIO for about 10 years. I started in 2005. I teach mostly graphic design and printmaking, although I'm also a painter. I'm also currently serving as chair of the School of uh, Arts and Letters. Uh, I came to, to Rio Grande in 1990, so I've been here uh, almost 26 years. Uh, I teach sculpture, ceramics, art history, drawing, and 3D, three-dimensional design. And um, I have really enjoyed this school. Uh, I know that you guys have a, a pretty vibrant program. Uh, I've been involved being back in from my former life as a musician when I came here as the choir director getting to know both of you uh, and I know that you have a very strong program academically uh, you've got a, a lot of I guess what I would say intriguing uh, art projects going on that the students produce as well as both of you are active as artists right now mm -hmm. uh, you want to talk just a little bit uh, especially Benji starting with you and then Kevin uh, about some of the work that you've got going on right now sure sure uh, I think we have some images too. Uh, I'll talk about just a few of my recent projects. Uh, don't remember what we, what do we start with, Mike? Uh, this first project is a project we did in uh, working with Bob Evans Farms. And Bob Evans Farms, which as you probably know if you're a regular watcher and listener of this program, is a benefactor of the, United, of the uh, University of Rio Grande. When they built a new corporate headquarters, they commissioned both myself and Professor Lyles to do artwork for their new headquarters. This is a large-scale mural uh, that I painted for them that's now in their cafeteria, which is the next image there. Uh, this is maybe 2013. Um, in 2015, uh, I was uh, fortunate enough to be granted a sabbatical. The university supports uh, scholarship and research amongst the faculty. Mm -hmm and part of that is time off to work on projects. And so during my sabbatical, I traveled to a number of places. One of them was um, the Cleveland Institute of Art for a week-long residency there, working with the faculty to produce the image that was just on the screen, which is a, a bare tree in winter. This is the start of kind of a, a series of landscape images. Uh, following that, I was awarded a uh, fellowship and a residency at the McDowell Colony in New Hampshire where I produced this image you're seeing. This is an image of two trees. Uh, they're kind of dying trees in New Hampshire uh, on the colonies, the McDowell colonies um, grounds with a large stripe for color balance on the other side. This one was particularly of interest to me because this colony was founded by Edward and Marion McDowell. And so I thought of these trees as having a kind of a symbolic relationship to those two people. And so this is for Edward, Edward and Marion. How long, how long were you there? Uh, I was in the McDowell Colony for about four weeks, uh, okay. and uh, following that I brought home work and, and did some more work. McDowell is a really fascinating area because it's not only visual artists, but it's um, composers, uh, playwrights, architects, uh, authors. poets, uh, yeah. authors. So I was actually had to have dinner with a Pulitzer Prize winner there, which was wow. a little bit a little bit nerve wracking. Wow. I'm not yeah. quite at that level, but Benji, tell, uh, tell them how you uh, how you were delivered lunch each day. So at the McDowell Colony, the way it was started was um, Edward McDowell was a pianist, and he bought this piece of land in New Hampshire. He lived in New York City, and he wanted to go to New Hampshire to get away from everything. His wife had some, some land there. And so uh, Edward would go off in this little cabin that was built in the woods, and Marion would have lunch with him every day. Unless he didn't come down for lunch, she felt like, well, maybe he doesn't want to be disturbed. So she would bring a basket out and leave it on the porch of the cabin. So all the artists there, all the fellows that are at the McDowell Colony, 
stay in cabins where they have studios and someone brings you lunch and leaves it in a basket so as not to disturb you during your working day. Well, and then in the here. evenings you have lunch with all the other artists that are there and have these fantastic discussions and there's a library where we do presentations and share each other's work. And I met people <clears> from all over the world, India, England, Saudi Arabia, Iraq. It was just, it was just really a lovely, lovely time. That sounds like a fascinating and, and uh, wonderful experience. It, it, was, it was stunning. And you've got some more work that you've got uh, images yeah. for us? Yeah, one more image here, a couple more images about this project. This is a project that I was involved with. I was invited by a man named Charles Bluestone, who is doing a project called Art Hatching Across Ohio. And he commissioned 48 Ohio artists to make art on ostrich eggs. So this is a hollowed out ostrich egg. Hmm. And uh, he commissioned each of us to work on one of these eggs. And all the works together are in an exhibition that started at the Southern Ohio Museum of Art in Portsmouth and is currently at the Columbus Museum of Art, and it's going to travel to the Massillon Museum, the Parkersburg Art Center, and the Zanesville Museum. This is the opening at um, the Columbus Museum of Art, and there's Chuck in the yellow shirt there. We're a series of artist talks in the Columbus Museum, so I did a couple of those where I talked about the work that I made, uh, and he required that everybody wear yellow and white to represent the egg yolks and the eggshells oh. during the artist talk, so he, had this, he went out and bought yellow shirts for these. Uh, so the image I had was of Archaeopteryx, which is a dinosaur, and this dinosaur's fossils were discovered in lithographic limestone. And so the image was printed from a lithographic limestone, and it was printed an image of this bird. There was the bird dinosaur, and so there was a connection between both the process that was made and the egg, and then it's made in a nest of lithographic limestones as well. So no. it's conceptually connected. So you printed that on the egg? I printed it on thin paper and glued it to the egg. Oh, I yeah, see. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. And then, uh, Kevin, you've got some uh, works that you've been doing, and yours are a little bit different from uh, Benji's. Yes. This, uh, this piece that you're seeing on the screen now is called uh, Farmland Forest, and uh, it was commissioned uh, the same time that Benji uh, commissioned the mural that, that was uh, in the dining room at the Bob Evans corporate offices. Uh, this piece is stainless steel and uh, glacial uh, Ohio glacial stone. In fact, that stone was mined uh, just south of Columbus. Uh, that was left over when the, uh, the last ice age receded. And so it has uh, 15,000 pounds of, uh, of Ohio glacial stone in the bottom. And then uh, that is an abstraction of the trees that are found over in the uh, Bob Evans farms here in Rio Grande. This okay. piece is about 10 foot tall, 12 foot long, and uh, three feet wide. And this is on the uh, on the grounds, on the front grounds of the new Bob Evans Farms or Bob Evans correct. restaurant chain. Uh, uh, correct. In their, their corporate offices up in New Albany, Ohio, which okay. is just east of Columbus. Okay. All right, and and then you've got some other works. Yours, yeah. Yours seem to be a little bit more. Uh, the last few years, bigger. I have been uh, I've been uh, doing a lot more outdoor commissions for uh, corporations or or for colleges or for um, uh, different places. Uh, this was uh, uh, the maquette of a new piece that I just recently completed for uh, the Ohio Arts Council Percent for Arts program. It was uh, commissioned by um, the Ohio Agricultural Research Development Center. Uh, the name of this piece is Fruit of Inquiry. When I, uh, when I was one of the finalists, uh, they, there were three finalists that, that had proposed for the work. Uh, we went up there and, and they told us what they wanted and what they didn't want and they specifically said uh, we're an agricultural research facility. We don't want any corn plants, uh, combines, or cows. And so I'm taking the four hour drive back and I'm thinking how in the world am I going to show agriculture without showing any of that stuff? And so I decided uh, I would represent research. And the scientists there at the Ohio Agricultural Research Development Center are into absolutely everything. They're connected with the medical school and with going to South America and finding new, new plants that they uh, uh, hybridize with, with our plants for medicine. They're into corn, they're into foods, they're into pathogens. And so within that sculpture, there are 70 bronze castings of, um, of some of the things that they research that are scattered about. The cubes themselves uh, represent research. Uh, likewise, in the bottom of this piece uh, is Ohio glacial stone, except this one has uh, 30,000 pounds of stone. And, uh, 
you can't see it from this image, but the uh, stainless is, uh, is fabricated in such a way that it, it looks as if there is a river flowing through, through the stone. And so right. that base represents our uh, land and water resources. How, how big is this, Kevin? That is 20 foot tall, uh, 27 foot long, and about 15 foot wide. Wow. So it's, it's a pretty major commission, and I, I just finished it a, a month or so ago, and uh, they are not quite finished with the fountain that they're putting around it, uh, nor the sodding and, and the rest of the landscaping. So I'm anxious to see that piece completely, completely finished. Very nice. I was, you, uh, oh, go ahead. Go oh, ahead. I was really blessed, blessed to have gotten that job, and one of the neat things was uh, I probably hired 20 students to help that with that project and so within that a lot of those little bronze castings of those things that those guys have researched uh, I actually uh, hired students to accomplish for me so it's pretty neat to have the next generation involved in, in the artwork. That's actually a terrific segue into some of the next uh, visual images that we have in some of the works that your students are involved in and some of the things you have going on within the art program, not just with students, but I understand you bring in both, both guest artists as well as guest instructors uh, to work with the students. Can you show us and talk a little, talk a little bit about these images and what's going on here? Sure. This is, uh, this is an image of Emily Roop, and uh, Emily was one of our students that uh, just graduated this last May. Um, all of our art and art education majors, one of their requirements is that they have to have a, a, an exiting uh, senior exhibit. Uh, oftentimes, if there are, are many graduating at once, those will be a group exhibit. But in this case, uh, Emily had enough work and, and she was uh, uh, mature enough in her work that we gave her a, a show of her own. And so here she is in the rear gallery uh, showing off her, her work. So all of, the, all of these images, all of these works are hers that she produced? Well, in that last image that they one. were. Uh, one of the interesting things about Emily, too, is she's been really successful at getting commissions and winning a lot of prizes. Since, just since the show, she's won several uh, prizes in local art shows in uh, Parkersburg uh, and in Southern Ohio Museum of Art, and she's just been doing really well. That's well right, that. Benji. In fact, and uh, you, and I, you and I both were in, that, uh, in the cream of the crop show, yeah. and uh, we were lucky to get in, but neither one of us won any awards, and our students did and sold work. So, wow. so that was a pretty good feeling. That is neat. That is neat. I like it better when we <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, there is that too. This is a, a, another one of our recent graduates. This is Claire Smith's work. Um, Claire did a, a lot of work with me in um, printmaking. She also did a lot of work with Kevin in ceramics. And one of the things we try to get the um, students to think about is getting ideas out, not necessarily linked to a medium. It's not about, oh, I'm a painter or I'm a ceramicist, but I'm an artist and I use whatever medium I need to get the message out. Uh, her work was a little bit more political, and she talked a lot about uh, gender and sexuality, and so some of the work was more controversial, but she's been doing really well. She's planning on attending graduate school, and right about now she's in New Mexico serving as an assistant to a really well-known printmaker, Jeff Sipple. Uh, she's working with him at a workshop he's conducting in New Mexico through, a, uh, through meeting him at a workshop she attended at Huntington Museum of Art, which I, wow. I think our next image is a... I HMA. believe it is. Yes, yeah. uh, these are two of our students, Carrie Lawrence and, and Gabe Richmond, uh, and they're with a uh, an artist named William Burard. Uh, William is a, a world class ceramist, and uh, we're lucky enough that the Huntington Museum of Art, which is only about an hour away, has this uh, Walter Gropius series, mm -hmm. and they bring in world-class artist uh, it's really neat because we can go down there and uh, work all day Friday all day Saturday and half day Sunday usually there are 10 to 14 people in the workshop and we get personal attention from these world-class artists they've also been gracious enough that uh, most of the times uh, our students uh, are able to uh, go on scholarship uh, we faculty have to pay uh, but it is well worth it and so in that image uh, William uh, actually allowed uh, Gabe and Carrie to uh, uh, decorate some of his own work, and they were they were quite proud of that. Wow! And we've had a really good partnership with the Huntington Museum, and and being able to do those things with the students and with the with the staff there at Huntington and with the visiting artists, which are some of the biggest names in the contemporary art world. That's pretty yeah. exciting for students at Little Rio Grande it to be is, able to interact really with exciting. artists of that caliber. One of the things we think that is a challenge, and of course there are many great things about Rio Grande, one of the challenges is our isolation geographically, right. and we right. work very hard to, to address that through not only 
taking them to places like that, but also trips to uh, New York City and Cincinnati, Pittsburgh. Yeah, you uh, usually have an annual trip, don't you, with, we do. uh, with yeah, the students? Here's, here's uh, some students from one of the trips horsing around on the subway. They all learn to ride the subway, which is a lot of fun. We take students for um, five days to New York City and visit uh, museums. Um, and uh, this is uh, at the Metropolitan Museum. And so we see all the world-class museums. They get to get to see the real work. And it seems to be a life-changing thing for a lot of those students. A few of them have done some of that. But I would say if we take 10 students, I would say eight of them have never been to a really world-class museum. Yeah, uh, usually out of, out of the 10, maybe five have never been out of Ohio. Yeah. And I imagine some have never flown. Uh, well, they don't get to fly on this oh, okay. trip either. Uh, <laughs> they still don't fly. <laughs> <laughs> we usually, t we usually uh, drive minivans and stay in a hostel, yeah. uh, but that's really really still part of the experience and quite enjoyable. Yeah, that previous slide with the sax is kind of fun. This was uh, at the Museum of Modern Art, and this is an example of performance art in which this artist made a piece in the 1970s and had instructions for how to reenact performance art. So here we were actually creating the artwork with the students of this famous artist in the Museum of Modern Art, hmm. which was that kind of a neat thing to do and also kind of silly. So it was, it was a lot of, those trips were a lot of fun. Do you, do the, did the students, could you go back to that mic for just a second? Do the students, and everybody who's participating there, do they just stand there? I don't remember what the instructions were. I think they were, they were kind of uh, vague. You had to stand in a certain way or you could change the way you stood. And we had other things where you'd fold cloth and get underneath okay. it and strings. It was, it was all very strange. And, but I, after this happened, several of the students got really interested in performance art and incorporating some elements of performance art into, into their work, which is not something that's typically covered in the curriculum. But that's what those trips do for Those right. kinds of things do for us is that exposure to those things. That expands the, their whole, whole uh, horizon about I, what I can see be done the, I see the main thing of those trips as empowering. Mm -hmm. uh, those students, uh, you know, it's, it's not, not infrequent that, that several years later they'll email us or, or contact us on Facebook and say, hey, I am back in New York with my family, and it's crazy fun, and uh, and we thank you for that. So, and some of these kids that that uh, one of the tendencies that I've seen with a lot of students that we have here, because they're from this area, they tend to want to stay here, and part of that is because they don't know what else is out there, and right. they're a little bit. Uh, apprehensive about yeah. what that might entail. So being able to take those students out to a city like New York and put them on the subway and see that, okay, this is doable, this is, this, we can do right. this, uh, right. really opens up their mind to what, what the potential is both as artists as well as people. It right. sure does. Right. All right, that next image we have is kind of fun. This is a picture in the Brooklyn Art Library. And this is a place where you can make a, um, a sketchbook and send it into them and they'll store it in the library so these are students that have work in the Brooklyn Library and so we're visiting our work in no, the library. Neat. So that's cool. Oh, how neat. All right. So these are just more pictures of various student trips to so Cincinnati. I think the next might also be uh, there's Pittsburgh and the Warhol Museum. Uh-huh. Um, I'm not sure where else we went. Oh, the Detroit. There was a, a conference there. We went to Detroit and then I think the next picture is a uh, those students doing research on a, a famous printmaker, Francis Goya, and looking at the original work. And we actually have a Goya in our we museum actually over have here. Three, three Goyas. Three Goyas. Yes. Uh, in in the uh, permanent collection in the upstairs of the of the, of the Greer Museum. Uh, Greer Museum. Mm -hmm. Great collection. Um, oh, it's a fabulous collection. Uh, we just, as you know, we just had uh, some visitors from China coming over. Uh, just a few weeks ago, and one of the things that I wanted to make sure that they did was get up to that permanent mu uh, exhibit in the Greer Museum because mm -hmm. it's got some fabulous work in it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's such a neat opportunity for them to see that, uh, that some of the things that we can do even here on Rios campus. Uh, and then, of course, uh, one of the things we haven't mentioned yet, both of you being faculty members, the uh, university has a, a program uh, from the Maddox Center for F Welsh Studies. They offer a fellowship every year. Uh, I was fortunate to be chosen as the Welsh Fellow for one of the years that I was a faculty member, and each of you have been a Welsh Fellow. That's true. Uh, That's back to back, and then this upcoming year, uh, for the first time, you're doing a joint uh, uh, fellowship, mm -hmm. uh, and so you're both co-fellows fellows for the Maddox Center. Can you talk just a little bit about that? Sure. Go ahead, uh, well, we came up with a, an idea we called paired landscapes. One of the reasons the Welsh settled in this area, among others, is that the landscape was similar to southern to, to Wales, uh, southern Ohio's landscape. And so I've been doing landscape work, as you saw earlier, and Kevin's been doing landscape work. And so we decided we would do work in which Kevin made sculptural objects and I made two-dimensional objects. 
and we would pair our, our images. So one of my pieces is paired with his. So one of mine might be whales, and his will be a similar structure in uh, southern Ohio, or vice versa. We're, we're pretty preliminary into that, and so we've got all the, these ideas worked out, but we actually haven't implemented too much of the work yet, and uh, that, that exhi exhibit is not due until March right. uh, of 2017, and so uh, it's actually been kind of fun, the, uh, the bantering back and forth of how we should do that and what we should do and how big they should be and what materials and, uh, and media, and so uh, that's an exciting thing, and it's exciting to, to work uh, with a colleague. In fact, when we were over in Wales, uh, we were fortunate enough to, uh, to stay with two colleagues that uh, we had both worked with before. One is Andrew Baldwin, and he has been associated with Aberystwyth University. Mm -hmm. And the other is uh, Brian Thomas, who has been associated with uh, Trinity University in Carmarthen, Wales. And while we were there, uh, there's, there's an image of Brian uh, and Benji, and we were out drawing uh, sheep uh, and landscapes uh, way up on the, uh, in the mountains in Wales. But uh, while we were there, one day we were talking, it's, uh, it's really exciting to, uh, to go on a trip to a foreign country. Uh, that's exciting. What makes it even more exciting is to, uh, to go with a, uh, a colleague that you care about. What makes it even more exciting is to, uh, is to do something in your domain while you're there that you feel useful. And what makes it best of all is to stay with the people of that culture. And so Benji and I had the, the best of all worlds with that trip and, uh, and felt really fortunate to have it. Yeah, that last image was, was uh, me sitting in the yard drawing with the, the youngest child of, of Brian's, Eva. And so we're just sitting out there talking and drawing. And so that time, that cultural connection was, I think, really strong. And we're yeah. bringing Brian in for, hopefully, for a, um, for a visit here to do a workshop with area local school children. We have a, a small endowment for bringing arts to south, the children of southeastern Ohio. And so one of the things we're going to do is uh, hopefully bring Brian in to work with uh, students at River Valley High School. Correct. And that's one of the things that you've done in the past is yes. bring in artists uh, that both work, do a little bit of workshop here and then either bring the local students here or get those, those uh, artists to go out into the public schools and do workshops with them. Yeah, we've done a number of those projects that have been very successful and a lot of impact for the students. Uh, here are some of the images from uh, an artist from New York City working with some students in Portsmouth High School. And I think there are several images of this. The students worked with her at the high school and then also came to the college. I think there are some images of this as well. Well, that, that, Here they are working at that the college. Art, that artist, Tracy, has, uh, has work uh, that she also did with some students out of New York that is in the 9-11 uh, Museum. Mm -hmm. And so she's a uh, she's pretty high, high class artist. Yep. And uh, here's uh, Brian Thomas, who was one of the people we visited when his hair was a little darker. Uh, he was here uh, earlier. 2003 maybe? Yeah, Working it seems like it was about 10 years ago. I'm yeah. not exactly sure. And um, we brought Andrew Baldwin in uh, to do a workshop at Federal Hawking High School up in Athens County uh, with some materials that he's producing for uh, uh, health and safety for our less toxic printmaking methods. Exactly. He did a so presentation here. Yes, he did. On, on that. It was fascinating to see uh, both get some of the history of, of some of the materials that artists typically work with that can be toxic and his whole approach is trying to find other materials that can do either similar or exactly the same thing that are non-toxic. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was fascinating. I was, uh, was talking to some of the students afterwards that they were, they were intrigued by the whole idea uh, yeah. of that. I was kind of fascinated. I'm not a printmaker, but it surprised me when I saw soy sauce as one of the, uh, uh. As one of the materials for printmaking. And he was, that, was, uh, that picture was him uh, demonstrating in a printmaking process with some of those materials. Is that correct? Yeah, and yes, he was demonstrating. He was using it with the students. The students made artwork using those materials in Federal Hawking High School, which is a benefit to be able to bring those things to the high school where health and safety is a real concern and may not have the facilities for proper ventilation. Right. You can use these materials in the high right. school, so that broadens their horizons. And, and are these materials, he's developing these materials, or he's working with others to do that? No, he's developed them and he's selling them. He's doing quite well. He goes to uh, trade shows all over the world uh, selling them some material and it's really catching on. Okay. It's called right. uh, BIG, or Baldwin and Taglio Ground, uh, for him, his name, Andrew okay. Baldwin. All right. And of course, uh, and of course we've got some other images here. Some other visiting artists. This is Carla Hacken Miller from Ohio University. And uh, I think before that was Allison Helm. Yeah, Allison is the, is the uh, director of the creative arts at uh, uh, West Virginia University in Morgantown, but she's also a world-class sculptor. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm noticing just looking in that and then also from what I understand about especially in your area with sculpture and with ceramics there are some there are some innate safety issues that you have to deal with within some of the materials and some of the tools that you have to work with. Oh, absolutely. Um, and we do take those into consideration. In fact, a couple of years ago during our, uh, our departmental review, uh, we, we revamped all of our safety things. And so uh, that, that takes place up there and the students learn, learn about that. And, uh, but, but at the same time, you can't scare them away and not, and not have that. Uh, and so uh, we do what's right and then they learn how to, how to take that with them throughout their careers. Great, great. Uh, and do you have anything coming up, any shows that you want to uh, discuss uh, that are coming up? Well, we've got the fall is about to, our fall semester is about to start in just a few weeks, so we've got we're gearing up for that. Uh, but uh, I know that you guys always have something going on throughout the semester. Any graduating seniors shows coming up, or anything else that uh, you want to put a plug in for? Well, we've got uh, got the time. I would say you should you should go to. Um Oh, this is, this is Kevin Lyle's website, and my website will be showing up here, too. You should go to the RIO page to get the updated career schedule. We're going to have a ceramic show in the fall from Ohio University Ceramics and Sculpture, and then one other show, and I'm not sure if that's set yet. There may, have been, um, uh, there may be still be in flux. In the spring, we'll have several shows, including our um, uh, graduating senior shows, okay. depending on how well they do in the fall. Correct. And uh, also the uh, the juried student show coming up in, in the fall, in and, the spring. And that talk just briefly about that juried student show. Uh, any student that takes an art class at the University of Rio Grande is eligible to enter. We bring in a guest juror from outside and they select prizes. And uh, what goes in the show is usually a really great show with a lot of people coming in. All right. Uh, and that, I've seen that show. I've seen a lot of your shows. Uh, and they're always fabulous. They're, they're well attended. The, the students are, are very engaging. Uh, the works that they do. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I know that you guys work very hard on, on uh, getting the students to really challenge themselves to go to try new things and uh, express what an artist is tr getting more. It, I'm trying to figure out what we I'm try trying to, to say. make their we try to make their work work look good so it makes us look good. Oh, well, that's a good <laughs> way to say it is too. That's boy, that's an educator right there. That, that's just great. Um, so this is fascinating stuff. Uh, for those who are interested, uh, please go to the Rio Grande website, www.rio.edu, and click on any of those links that might have something to do with the art program uh, under curriculum or anything like that. And it'll send you some uh, interesting, send you to some interesting links where you can get some more information about some of the things that we have going on. We are very excited that you were able to be with us. Thank you both to Kevin and, and Benji You're for welcome. sharing Thank some you, of the David. things that you were going on. Uh, please come back and join us again for another Voices of Rio, and we look forward to doing that for you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.